Guys, one of the 30 stocks I want to own is up big today, Cintas, the biggest leader on the S&P right now. They just crushed on earnings and increased their guidance. So let's go take a look and see if it's a company I need to start buying right now. So guys, Cintas up 9.6% today. They were expecting to make $3.58 per share. They made $3.84. They're expecting $2.39 billion in revenue. They reported $2.406. These are the uniform people, guys. Boring company in Cincinnati, Ohio. No AI, no nothing. They provide uniforms. They do extinguishers. They do a lot of things for a lot of uniform companies, companies that uniforms like mechanic shops, like factories, et cetera. Not sexy. That's why I love it. So let's take a look at this company. It is a $70 billion company that last year had $1.32 billion in free cash flow. And the best part is, look at their enterprise value. $75 billion versus $70.6 billion market cap. So not a ton of debt. Look at this return on invested capital. 15% over the last five years, 16.9% over the last year. Growing their return on invested capital, high return on equity. Small dividend, 0.7%, but it eats up $500 million of their free cash flow. That's a big chunk. That's a lot of money going out there. 48% gross margin, solid gross margin, guys. That's double Walmart. Now, there are different industries, but just to give you a reference point there. Great gross margin, bottom line, very consistent. Five-year average of 14.75, last year at 156 here is a little bit of a concern right now. The one-year PE is 50. The one-year price of free cash flow is 53. Ouch. So, does that make it okay? Well, maybe. At the end of the day, every investment's the present value of all future cash flows. And if we knew these cash flows are going to triple in the next two years, would you pay 50 times? Of course you would. Of course you would. You would absolutely pay 50 times. Or if you knew that over the next 20 years, it could increase its free cash flow by 20% a year. Of course, you'd pay 50 times. Question is, is that probable? I don't know. Let's go check out a few other things here. Let's look at their eight pillars. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So if you look right here, guys, all six, six, checks, six checks and two Xs. And the two Xs are the five-year price to earnings ratio and the five-year price to free cash flow. Now, one thing I do like, guys, is their shares outstanding are down, but not a ton. So it tells me they're not buying back a lot of expensive shares because 50 times earning is this pretty stinking expensive. Pretty expensive. All right. So let's look at a couple other things here. Let's look at their, their actual annual report. So that today they reported results. Revenue was up 9.9% year over year to $2.41 billion. If you take out Impacts for acquisitions, force and exchange, blah, blah, blah. Their natural growth rate, organic revenue growth, organic, that means no acquisitions, things like that, was up 7.7%. That's awesome. That's a big jump. Okay, gross margin was at 49.4% and uh, compared to 47.2 last year's third quarter. Okay, that's good stuff. Increased gross margin. I like seeing that. And uh, operating income, which is really how you can look at how the business is doing itself. Operating income for the fiscal 2024 increased 16.6% to 500, and for the third quarter of 2024, to 520.8 million versus 446. That is awesome. That's absolutely awesome. I love seeing that. Operating income is, so let's, that, that's just a great way to sit there. And you look at the income statement where you can find it here. Operating income is right here. And look at this, growth. And this is something I'm going to start focusing on more to show how is the fundamentals of the business going. Forget about debt, forget about these other things. How is the business growing? And look at this operating income. 655, 724, 793, 943, a billion 40, a billion four, sorry, 1.04 billion, 1.23, 1.22, 1.46, 1.7, I mean, just growing their operating income. And if you look at a book like The Acquirer's Multiple, they talk about looking at the true value of business as look at their enterprise value divided by their operating income. And that's the best way to find good value, right? And that's, that's guys, this is an incredible, it, it's such a, I, I'm actually surprised about this PE being so high. 
for such a boring company based in Cincinnati, Ohio. That's what's amazing. Now, this is what I love about doing here. I sit here and I look at this data and I can sit there and make a decision whether I'm buy or sell. I don't know what I'm going to look at. We're going to do stock analyzer tools soon, but I can get a high level. And I, when I fall in love with the company, like I have with Cintas, I think it's an incredible business. It dominates that market. I have it as part of my 30 stocks to own forever. Because I look at this company saying, this is a leader in the market and it's probably not going away. So I look at that saying, okay, this is a company I want to look at for a long period of time. I'm going to make the decision whether I buy, or sell, buy it or not buy it based on the data, based on these fundamentals. That's what I have this software for. I did that for that exact reason. But if the stock goes from $695 a share to $250, and I've bought it at, let's say, hypothetically, 350 That's going to be pretty scary, right? Because I have to sit there and look at the emotion of seeing Mr. Market say, your stock has fallen. This happens all the time. And it doesn't just happen when going down. Look at NVIDIA recently with going up. It goes up a ton. You have FOMO. Am I missing out on something? I don't know. Look at DJT, Donald Trump's media company right now. It's up a ton. Am I missing out? I don't know. But when you make your decisions based on proper fundamentals, that gives you a little peace. But it's not done there. The next hard part about investing is the emotional side of investing. How do you stay true to it? When the fundamentals, things like if the stock were to fall, are you going to be able to come here and look at the operating income and feel good saying, wait, operating income is still going up. How are you going to be able to handle that? That's exactly why I spent millions of dollars making the community and making the software. I use the tools in the software to make my buy decisions. I use the community to stay, to keep my emotions in check because emotions are the number one most important part for being a successful investor and sleeping better at night. When you have the emotions in check, you're going to make less dumb decisions. We all make the worst decisions when we're factoring our emotions in and everybody's done it in history. Warren Buffett, myself, you, we've all made bad financial decisions because of emotion. So what I'm asking you to do here is come join the community. Don't make a permanent decision. I want you to make an educated decision. I want you to make an informed decision by joining the community, $7 for seven days. Click the link below. It allows you to have all the tools, but most importantly, it'll help keep your emotions in check and make you a more confident investor so you can make more money long-term and sleep better at night. So go check that out. Now, let's see what the analyst estimates are for this company. Guys, look at this boring ass company. $15 per share in profit here, $20 in three or four years, almost double digit growth. 13%, 10%, 10%, two and a half, nine. Again, these are analysts and analysts have their bias in here. So you have to remember that when you're looking at it. Revenue growth assumptions. Actually, I'm surprised by this. A lot higher than expected. I'm actually surprised that the revenue growth is this high and with such a high gross margin, the EPS growth isn't higher. Because when you have a high gross margin, the more revenue you put in there, it doesn't take much more people and overhead to generate that profit. So you can really drive a lot of money to the bottom line. I would have guessed if this revenue growth, growth was here, I would have said 15 or 20% earnings growth. But alas, it did not happen. I don't know why, but this is what analysts are saying about the revenue growth. So it goes to the next thing, which is what's the right price to pay for Cintas? Remember, you see a company like this. And again, like I talked about earlier, you have the FOMO. Guys, this is a company I've said for months and months in my video that's months old, I want to own. So on January 8th, I put this video out that I wanted to own Cintas. And since then, basically it's up 11, sorry, year to date, 17%. All right, and, but that's including 9% today. But that's a big jump. So I'm thinking to myself, did I miss out on something? Well, that's the hard part about all of this is I'm trying to keep myself in check while looking at this saying, Paul, do you want to own Cintas at... $695 per share. Every investment's the present value of all the future cash flow you're going to get. And the more you pay for something, the less return you're going to make. It's just math. Okay? Now, before we get into the stock analyzer tool, I also want to talk about Carnival Cruise Line because this stock is down a lot today. And the reason I want to talk about this company is it's a great learning lesson. A lot of people will dictate their right or wrong based on profit or loss. I made money on Carnival Cruise Line. I was wrong about Carnival Cruise Line. I just got lucky. I got lucky at the market. Mr. Market made Carnival Cruise Line stock go up and I was able to sell out of it. And by the time I bought back in or wanted to buy back in, my thesis had changed. I made a bet on Carnival Cruise Line during the shutdown, during the COVID shutdown saying, listen, they're going to come back. They're going to come back strong, blah, 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 blah. I thought they're going to issue X number of shares, X amount of debt. 
guess what? They issued way more than that. Way more than I expected of debt and shares. So not only did they put more debt in the company, they diluted me as an owner. And only because of the market going up and Carnival Cruise Line going to $27 or $28 a share did I make money. But I was wrong on Carnival Cruise Line. So I want everybody to realize that. that and look at my NVIDIA and, and QQQ short. I lost money there. I think it because I exited. I think when it's all plays out, I'm going to end up being right on those plays as well. So don't just look at your profit and loss saying I was right or wrong. You've got to sit there and understand what is your process here. My process on Cintas is I want to buy a great company at a great at a good price. I don't need to buy a great company at an amazing price. I don't need to buy it. I want to buy it at a good price. Does that mean I'm going to pay a premium? Absolutely. But how much of a premium is too much? So let's go to our stock analyzer tool. We're going to pull up Cintas in our history. So guys, I did this on January 18th. This is my Cintas 10-year assumptions, okay? Revenue growth, I did three, six, and nine. I remember the four or five-year revenue growth numbers were seven, eight, or 9%. So I think I'm being a little bit more conservative than the analyst, but I'm also going out 10 years versus four or five. Profit margin, 13, 14, and 15. And I actually kept the same for free cash flow. But if you look at free cash flow, in the last 10 years, it was less than profit margin. But... The last five years, it was higher. So I just kind of put them together as the same level. Now, PE. Current PE is 50. Current price of free cash flow is 56. I put 16, 19, and 22. And the reason I put in those numbers and not something higher and not something lower, like I said, I think they're known as uniform people. I think they're a great business. I think they got good manageable debt. I just look at it saying, do I feel like 25? <laughs> Maybe. I think more. that's more for like a really good growing tech company. This is not that. I could be wrong. You might disagree with me. All the more reason to sign up for the software so you can put your own assumptions in. And I only put 9% desire return. Remember, 9% is based on the market return. So this assumes no margin of safety. And we need margin of safety for three reasons, according to Seth Klarman. One, valuation is imprecise art. We don't, it's not a science. You all take different assumptions. You talk about quality, quantity, et cetera. Two, the future is unknown. We have no idea what's going to happen in the future. If we did, we could pay the exact right price for a company. And three, we're humans. We make mistakes. That's going to happen. Everybody's done it. You're going to make the mistakes. That's why you need margin of safety. So again, this value assumes no margin of safety because I kind of want you to put your own in there. Hit the analyze button. And my prices are 184 on the low side, 414 on the high side, 277 in the middle. Guys, I had it at 270 on my watch list and I'm going to keep it there because right when it hits that market value, I'm going to start selling puts at that price. So guys, if you want to see the other 29 companies that I want to own in my, that I want to own long-term, watch this next video. I'll see you in the community.